So hello, I am the executive director and co-founder of the Brick Foundation. My name is Nicole Hendricks. Very happy to be with you here today with my co-founder, Miss Allison Mann. Thanks for being here. Um, and our colleague. Colleague, partner, friend. Um, and so we have a program with you to share with you today. Um, this is an info session. We like to do this every time our apprenticeship application opens. We have lots of changes this year that we're excited to share with you. Um, and this presentation will be recorded. So if you need to hop off, no worries. And with that, over to Sochi. Hi everyone, I'm Sochi Torres. I'm the program director for the Arts, Media, and Entertainment Highway Training Partnership here at Brick. And I am going to share my screen so we can go through the presentation. Uh, so welcome to the Q&A. So first, if, if you're new and you haven't heard of Bricks Apprenticeship and this is your first time, so Bricks Animation, Visual Effects, and Gaming Apprenticeship is a federally and state recognized apprenticeship program that combines paid on-the-job training with mentorship and job-related academic instruction, which we call related supplemental instruction, and it aims to support young people and veterans of all backgrounds in obtaining entry-level positions within the animation, VFX, uh, and gaming industries. So it is... 12 months of dedicated mentorship with one of our partner organizations. It's a minimum of six months of paid on-the-job training and then 144 hours of the academic training that we talked about. And then at the end of the time in your program, you do get a certificate of completion that is equivalent to a college degree. Who is eligible to apply to BRICS apprenticeship program? So it is current California residents. Uh, you have to be between the ages of 18 to 24 by January 2025 or a veteran uh, authorized to work in the U.S. Uh, and a right to work in California and a foundational knowledge of one of the available career tracks listed in the next slide. I will pass that to Nicole. Great. Um, so we have many different types of career paths. Um, so... There's a difference between what BRIC has registered and supports and what is currently open this November 2024 for placement. So we do recommend um, if you feel that you have a background in any of these, please do um, apply because we do keep your application on file and rolling. So just because we don't have an employer this second looking for it doesn't mean I won't get a call next Tuesday saying, give me 12 applicants by Friday and I'll hire one. You know, things do because it is the entertainment industry. Um, there isn't a, on this day, we'll take this many for this long. It is kind of a rolling and sometimes can be a tight turnaround. If you get an email from me saying, hi, can I pre-screen you for an interview within the next week? Like, so just, um, that's why it's hard for us to know exactly what positions we will have available for the upcoming year. Um, but we have CG generalists. This can be animator, rigger, modeler, um, so sometimes it will say, I'm really looking for an animator, but we generally have you all um, with that background under this bucket, because we do believe that if you are skilled in this software doing this thing, you probably have a decent um, chance of being good at this software. We really focus on transferable skills. Um, and then we have a concept art, um, visual development artist. This is also our background artist can fall under there as well. Um, game designer, uh, production manager, we probably have the most placements currently in this track. Um, and then storyboard artist, revisionist, tech artists, and visual effects artists. Um, if you have a background in Houdini or compositing, that's where we would have you apply under visual effects versus under generalist. Um, you can apply to multiple tracks. Just make sure that you are tailoring your portfolio for portfolio um, specific roles um, to the role that you're applying for. We have lots of partners um, and also we are proud to announce um, that Schoolism is actually going to be joining us as an RSI training partner, hopefully by um, the end of the year. Um, so what does this mean? Uh, this means that for that 144 hours of related supplemental instruction, there are specific like buckets of knowledge that we're wanting you to cover with that, but it's pretty flexible and tailored to the needs of you and the employer. So for example, um, if your employer is like, we really like working with this person, they would be way more hireable if they had 
more foundational or expertise in anatomy or whatever that might be. Um, then we kind of look through our partners um, and your particular goals necessarily like outside of this apprenticeship and try to do the best matchmaking for you. If you find a seminar, for example, some of our production management apprentices in the past love the Sundance um, labs on production. Um, and so we will then reach out and, and purchase a course from there as well. So it is pretty flexible as long as we're covering those apprenticeship RSI um, buckets related to supplemental instruction. Employer partners. Um, our industry is not healthcare. Healthcare, you can have one hospital take on a ton of apprentices and they're doing this particular thing. Um, entertainment, specifically us, but in general, typically follows a employer consortium model. That means that, you know, Warner Brothers might take one or two, Paramount might take two, Disney might take however many. And then together that kind of makes up the cohort um, because just productions are all, there is no production that is the same and the needs might be different um, from year to year. So that is why you do want to apply with us each year to make sure that if you're putting out new portfolio pieces or updating your resume, um, as we have new employers that come on or reach out to us for specific things, we're able to kind of put your best foot forward when we're presenting you to them. Over to you, Al. All right, so um, it's really important to curate your work um, and put together like why you want to apply and kind of figure out a little bit of your branding and your 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 story. Um, so, you know, your origin story, um, it's all about empowering perspective. As an artist, we all come from different walks of life. I'm an artist as well. And I went to an art high school. And I remember when I was curating my portfolio to get into my art high school, like there was different things that I would pull out. I'm, I'm a painter. And so that was kind of my perspective. And I would talk about my use of color and why I was picking certain pictures and what they meant for me and where was, you know, the origin of, um, uh, of these stories and my inspiration for color styling or shape language. So, and also what makes you unique, like, um, I think we all have different backgrounds, uh, obviously, we all have all these different experiences, and that's what influences a lot of what we design. So bringing that into the fold, I think, is really important. Um, a one-page resume, do not do more, um, even as somebody who has 20 years of an experience. I, I still try to keep my resume down to one page, um, but it, it should only kind of focus on your work, your uh, education, and your software experience. You do not have to worry, in my opinion, about putting an objective on there. Um, just kind of give the uh, the basics of all of your, your experience. Um, a digital link to your portfolio was, um, website. So we go, going back to that curation, it has to have a minimum of five samples within your chosen discipline. But make sure they're the best of the best. Something that um, what you may not think about or maybe you do, but I've been working with professionals on this for years, is sometimes we forget to um, curate it to the best of the best, not thinking about you're not there to talk us through the history of your art. So if you have a piece that's not as strong as another piece in your portfolio, and the reason being is you want to show your progression. You're not there to like walk us through why that piece is there. So that is why the best of the best needs to be in there. And the other thing that we look for is consistency of pieces. So if we see one piece that is like stellar, and then there's another piece that it doesn't even look like you did it, um, or it could be vice versa, then we kind of question of where does your ability lie? So make sure that the pieces that you're, you're using, they can come from reference, do not copy anything. We will know if they are AI generated, we can tell those things. So please do not use any AI. Um, and again, those at least five um, samples. 
Um, and then a cover letter and a video reco uh, recording explaining why you want to be in this program. Going back to the first of your origin story, like what would it mean to go through this program? What are things that you feel like this would support and elevate you to get to that next point in your career or your artistic um, evolution? Um, because there's so many um, different aspects to this program that has a lot of support and it, you can add um, through the RSI, like uh, Nicole was saying, we want to hear like why those like specific entities would help elevate your craft. So just keep all that in mind. And then a cover letter, you know, is not a regurgitation of your resume. A, a cover letter is about you. Um, so while it is maybe about your art, it kind of gives you the kind of a, more about your journey as a human as you go and become a professional creative or you're trying to elevate yourself to that next level of being a, a creative um, in the creative profession that you're kind of uh, aiming for. So make sure that your cover cover letter and video recording um, is succinct. And then it also shares some back history and it doesn't go too much in regurgitation of your resume. And then because we do cover a lot of those career paths, if you're a production management um, person, you're obviously not going to have a robust portfolio. Um, so just really make sure that your resume is um, buttoned up. Maybe instead of that, you're putting your LinkedIn profile. Um, definitely focus on that cover letter and origin story as well. And same with game design, the likelihood of you having five games, very unlikely. So it's really about that quality over quantity. Um, so just, I would do maybe one to three. Obviously, if you have five, by all means, please submit them. Um, but just being aware that depending on your discipline, you might have more or less or not at all portfolio. Is that me? Okay. Um, so this is what's new this year. Uh, so previous years, we have had one application date. Um, you submit to it and then you'll generally hear from us if we are are not keeping you in the database and then you might never hear from us again um and we apologize for that we realize that's like a terrible way um to kind of wonder and we do appreciate you that do email and check in with us um but we're trying to make this just more honest more realistic and more communicative to you in a way that won't break us because this is our team like we have like two more humans we're a very small team so um we're trying to just be very clear on those dates. So we are going to be um, doing a priority deadline this year of December 8th. Um, you will know by January 15th if you are moving into our database or if we think that you should work on your portfolio a bit more. Um, and then again, we'll have another date March 2nd. You'll hear from us by April 15th and so on and so forth. Um, and then I think that this is something that will just be a lot healthier. Obviously, if you have questions, please email them. But we're trying to do our best to just make sure that we have a very robust FAQ. This video will be posted um, to just try to make sure that you're empowered to find a lot of these answers. Because at the end of the day, we can't control um, employer placements, right? There's a lot of things happening in industry and that shift and ebb and flow all the time. And we only activate this program when there is an employer that has matched with you. We're not trying to take a lot of people and say, and you're an apprentice and you're an apprentice and you're an apprentice. Like, that's great. I'm sure that that would be wonderful, but we really want to ground this in paid on the job employer matching. So everything is very employer led, not necessarily brick led. Um, great. Um, I think I just said all of this, um, but yes, essentially, once you have matched with an employer, um, we'll reach out to you. I will probably do a pre-screen with you um, or Sochi, um, and then we kind of just look over your experience. We tell you about the role, and we try to make sure that you're walking into that interview with the employer with your best foot forward. Um, for example, we are all multifaceted diamonds of human beings, right? Um, there's many things that we're interested in. And sometimes we can go into an interview saying, 
I want to do all of these things. That's not necessarily what an interviewer is wanting to hear. It's kind of like dating. If you go in and you're just like, I really want to date, like then nobody, like nobody wants to hear that. They want to hear that they're special, right? So it will um, just try to help you focus your facet of what you're interested in to make sure that you're having the best interview possible. Anything to add on that, Al? No, I think I covered it during the portfolio part. Great. Awesome. So there are a lot of people who have questions, and if you do, feel free to put them in the Q&A, uh, and somebody from our team will answer them as we go through, or we'll answer them at the end. But I did just want to go over some of the questions that you probably might have so that we don't have to go through them. Um, but what if I don't live in California or I'm older than 24 years old? Due to grant restrictions and limitations, we do ask that people be current California residents and be of the ages of 18 to 24 or veteran status and be authorized to work in the U.S. and the right to work in California. Nicola, did you have something to add? No, just uh, if you're over 24, you're welcome to apply. Um, but the preference from employers is probably going to skew a, a bit younger. Obviously, veterans do not need to be ages 18 to 24. Cool. Um, what if you applied last year? Do you have to apply again? So that goes back to this new model that we're doing for the application. So if you did apply last year, you now have the option to update your existing application and your um, profile rather than submitting a completely new one. Uh, how long does the program last? So it is a 12 month program and includes 144 hours of that academic training, which includes the mentorship, professional development, the paid on the job placement. Um, so we are a competency based model. So the apprenticeship just depends on the employer needs and how long they're uh, going to keep you on for the placement. Uh, will the placement be virtual or in person? So that really depends on the employer and the job placement. It could be remote, hybrid or all in person. It just depends on the employer um, needs. And the RSI also just depends. It could be a virtual class, it could be in person or a hybrid model. And while the program is a year, you're still with us for the next couple of years. So the people that have cycled out of their year, every time they go out for a job interview, they're letting us know like, hey, I applied here. Do you have any connections there? And then we send the resume on if we do. Um, typically one in five so far, um, one in four, depending on the discipline. Um, and then we also um, will be happy to kind of do a resume review with you, do mock interviews with you, um, just generally try to support you um, if for some reason the apprenticeship does not result in further work with that employer. Great. Um, I apply to more than one career track. Yes, uh, just as long as your application and portfolio are geared towards that um, pathway that you're applying to. Do you have to be a student to apply? No, it is open to any level of education as long as you meet the eligibility requirements that we've been going over. Uh, what will the hours be? Generally also just depends on the employer, but we are looking at something like full time, so up to 39 hours a week for the placement, uh, but it just varies on the employer needs. And are there any costs associated with this program? So apprenticeship is free to apply. Um, and if selected, BRIC does offer supportive services. So if there's anything that you need to be successful in your apprenticeship placement, whether that be transportation services, any technology services or equipment, uh, food insecure, clothing assistance, BRIC can help provide all of those things, things to set you on the path for success. And if you have any other questions, that is our email and that is the link to apply. But we also, oh, and we have some in the q and um, I'm applying for a December deadline. Suppose my portfolio doesn't match our standards. Will I be able to apply again in March with an updated application, expand portfolio, so on? Yes, um, there is a form. Um, I don't know, Danny, are you able to put the form into the chat? Um, yeah you are able to update your resume application with us at any time. So let's say you do a portfolio piece that you're really proud of, by all means, update yourself um, in the database. Um, and yeah, it's rolling. We can update your portfolio at any time if you send it in. 
SCAD student in Georgia and she experienced, if I'm not qualified for the program, do you possibly have an apprenticeship program that does? Ethan, SCAD student, are you in animation or what is your specialty? Um, Cause that kind of would dictate our response to that. Um, animation, okay. Um, Allison, do you know of anything going on in Georgia animation wise? No, there's some studios, Chalk, um, Chalk Dust Studios. Um, they are probably going to be ramping up at some point. They're just waiting on some finances, um, stuff to come through, but um, they might be a studio to keep an eye on for opportunities there. Yeah, and I will say I would really recommend going to Lightbox Expo next year. Um, Lightbox Expo is in Pasadena. It's typically like end of October. It's one of the largest animation and illustrator conventions in the U.S. Um, it's one of our favorite events. Uh, and that's a good way to kind of network and meet with people there. Um, and to just kind of talk more about different opportunities that might be available. I do know that a lot of studios love SCAD, um, alum. So I think that, whether it's, I know Riot Games in particular, um, and obviously they do animation as well now. Um, so I think like just the school that you're at as you're applying to these studio internship trainee things, um, I think that that's a, a good position for you to be in. Um, okay. Production manager mentorship. Is it open to folks who might be in their mid-career in management or is it mostly folks who are just starting out? Um, it depends on if your animation VFX or games focused. Um, so we partner with women in animation for a lot of this mentorship. They have a very special mentorship circle for our apprentices. Um, and so they have some pretty amazing people of all levels there. So, and then they also utilize a cohort model. So you would be with other mentees of, you know, different levels. So I think that that might be something really interesting, whether we're with or without us, right? Um, women in animation's mentorship circles are one of our favorite mentorship partners. Um, if you're looking more for games, um, like women in games obviously has, I, I also don't know your gender because gender you're an anonymous attendee. Um, Visual Effects Society also does some mentorship things. Um, so yeah, I think it just really depends on what is your emphasis within there? Um, if you feel like none of those buckets fit you, people are still pretty kind on LinkedIn. If you send them a message and ask if they will meet you for coffee, um, virtual coffee, uh, you might be able to kind of get some more pointers specifically if you're seeing careers that look like yours. Allison Mann, are you able to go in depth into the origin story? What are people looking for? How long should they be? You're muted. Oh, classics. Um, I think, you know, I always say uh, in general, I think two minutes feels pretty good for an ori origin story. Um, if you can elevate your pitch in a minute or less, that is the most ideal. Like the more succinct, the better. Um, uh, just because not only are they going to be listening to the video and everything else, but they're also going to be reviewing their portfolio, your portfolio. So just, you know, I wouldn't go too long in it and just hit the highlights um, and why you're connecting to the program and what your main career objectives are and where do you come from? Like pick three things you want to focus on and try to get it under two minutes with the ideal of one. You're muted. <laughs> Tag. Um, all right. So if uh, does Brick have feedback services to help applicants improving resumes and cover letters? No, um, but apply. And if you, I don't know, like that's not something we've we ever- have the portfolio uh, review thing. Oh, there we go. Dan, um, how We don't really advertise that, right? It's more just if you email and ask. All right. uh, I believe our plan is that everyone that is accepted into this program, we're, uh, and we might open this up to everyone that applies, is that we'll send them an invite list to, to help you kind of guide and support anyone that uh, 
that needs help that's applying to this program, I believe is what we were talking about, Nicole. But then we're going to kind of have to test out the scaling of that, depending on how many applicants and people we have showing up, because we do want to make sure we have. Right now, we have a small, like we've invited a couple of applicants that have asked for help uh, to a regular recurring monthly session. And then we're going to try to get more people that are applying included in this so you guys can keep improving your portfolios and increasing your chances for either getting into this program or getting a placement if you've been accepted. Um, so basically email us, I guess, yeah. is what we're saying, and yeah. we'll figure it out. We're, we're still figuring out the scalability of this, um, but yeah. Um, I, I think the other thing to note is as we go to conventions, festivals like Lightbox Expo or other tabling events, we are also happy to review portfolios, resumes, cover letters as time allows. Allison, how many panels in sequential art should you submit as a sample? I like a full scene, like as much to tell a story and get an idea of your understanding of um, cinematography. So at least one scene full. So if it's a comedy scene, making sure that the jokes are hitting. If it's a dramatic scene, making sure those moments are elevated. If it's an action sequence, then it's all the way through. Um, and then we have a choice of whether or not to watch the whole thing, but just at least one sequence. Um, I don't know how many, pan it varies on panels because I think it varies on um, the scene that you're you're building out. But as long, I mean, if you were to put it into a quick time um, or a video that's edited and timed out, which is what I would recommend instead of me clicking through or whoever's clicking through it, it should be probably no more than a minute long. Thank you. Um, are you eligible for an apprenticeship after you're graduated? Absolutely. Um, what we can actually do for that too is we can look at your course um, list, the things that you've taken, um, and you're able to, um, we can even swap out some of the RSI for that if you're meeting our RSI bucket. So if you feel like you're super burnt out after just finishing your degree, we try to work with you and see what we can kind of um, give credit for depending upon what that class covered and what your assignments were. We try to be very flexible um, just because life needs flexibility. Um, okay, examples of game design portfolios. That one is so broad. So again, we're talking about tiny, tiny startup employers that we're working with, and we're talking about massive AAA um, studios that we're working with. So we'd like to keep that one very broad. Um, you definitely list out front and center what languages and what engines you know, um, but kind of anything goes. I don't really feel like we've received two portfolios that kind of look the same. Um, Al, do you have anything to add to that? Like, I feel like that's like our most varied one. Yeah. And I, I don't know if we're breaking it out, but I, you know, I used to recruit for gaming and you were in gaming too. And obviously there's different modes of game designers there's like a narrative game designer there is the like the level designer there is like the more technical designer um i think also what's ha helpful is just also knowing like what you think is a good design like oftentimes like think of disneyland like when i used to recruit um game designers we would we would point to Disneyland as the, one of the best laid out designs for gamification and like how they built the lands and everything and how it's user friendly. So it's like your ability to understand um, your consumer and how they're going to lead from one level or one world to the next and, and then how and what those missions are going to look like. Um, is really important on a on a kind of a broader standpoint. So anything that kind of showcases your understanding of kind of that broad sense, again, if you were to break down something like a Disneyland. And and just to close loop on that, we don't have any um, narrative design positions available. Um, so that is not, um, writing is not a track that is part of our program at this time. 
Um, can you include fan art in your portfolio? I believe we have some pieces of fan art that showcase my abilities well. How do you feel about that, Allison? I'm all for fan, fan art. I'm a student in California with an F1 visa, but I'm graduating next year. Am I eligible for the program? Unfortunately, not at this time. Um, we, because it is a rolling situation, um, we just, it, it's just there, it can be a situation where you've gotten one month of employment because our employers are not necessarily able to sponsor you. Brick is not necessarily able to sponsor, right? So we just try to, the program is still small. So we were not really able to support that at this time. Um, Oh, can you repeat the number of panels, um, Al, question? Yeah, so it's about a full sequence. Um, it's less about how many panels and like I would time it out into like a quick time if, if possible because clicking through might not put you at the, um, it might not give um, the viewer what you're intending to showcase because our timing might be different as we're clicking through. So I would say if you, I think it's more based off of time. So no more than a minute versus how many panels, because as long as you're showcasing your understanding of perspective, cinematography, story, and genre, um, I think all of that is, is good. And, um, I would, before you send it to us, maybe showcase, like show it to a mom or a grandparent or a parental unit of any sort or a friend that doesn't know anything about our industry and uh, see if they understand the story that you're trying to convey. For portfolios with game examples, would you prefer and we show you gameplay, a link to download the game or a video of the gameplay, et cetera? I firmly believe that some people are never going to download that link, right? Download the game. Some people are. Some people are going to look at their videos. Some people won't. Some people want a game design document. Some people won't. So I, I'm firmly of the opinion that you just send a link to all three and clearly outline what they are um, because you want to be able to be accessible for the most amount of people looking at your portfolio. Al, do you feel any different? 100%. Um, Al, with fan art in our portfolio, should it be similar to official art or should it only highlight our skills? I think it should highlight your perspective. Like it, it shouldn't be a one for one of the design. Like this is not like a, like if you were to do like a design test for an animated show to get on it, you know, we're not looking to see if you can design directly and be placed on a show. Fan art is typically like taking what that is and then like showcasing your abilities and like in that character in a different light um so if you were to do little little red riding hood i mean that's not fan fan art but like if you did that and you showcased your twist on that um i think that's what's most important when you pull out the fan um fan what is it oh my god what's the word i'm looking for Fan. Fan. No, fan. Oh my God, not fan art. Is that fan art in the portfolio? I don't know. My brain's broken. Anyway, your perspective. Yes. Um, I see that one of the competencies outlined in several different divisions is the ability to contribute to a group team environment and align one's work with an organization. So competencies refer to when you are an active apprentice. So yes. Nothing is more collaborative than entertainment, period. And so any apprenticeship in an entertainment capacity, being able to work in a group in a team and being able to adjust your work to what the team needs is that. Um, so it's not something you need to come in. I mean, you obviously like, you need to have those soft skills or essential skills of being able to be collaborative, listen well, receive feedback, be able to utilize that feedback feedback and adjust what you're doing, right? Like those are things you do need to know how to do or at least be in a place where you're open to learn. Like if you are combative and defensive, that's not gonna 
work well in any work environment in a creative space. Um, but so that's just not required that you have proof of to enter in, but something that you need to be aware of will be part of the program. Um, Sochi, you did a panel with a lot of our apprentices on Monday. Do you have any anecdotes of success that you can share from them? I mean, the apprentices that we did the panel on on Monday were currently going through the program, but um, one of them is, this is their first industry entertainment related job and she is at DreamWorks and she's wrapping up in the end of November. Um, and she did actually just get another um, placement after this apprenticeship is over. I can't remember the company's name, um, but then the other apprentice we have is at Paramount doing production management. And then another one that we did uh, that we have is at Warner Brothers Animation um, and she is halfway through and she is a, as a storyboard artist. I didn't know Ant was invited back to Titmouse, Danny. Um, so yeah. Aunt, that's very exciting. Um, so Ant, um, so a lot of our apprentices utilize an employer share. So Ant, um, when they were going through, worked at Wild Blue and at Titmouse. And so they've been invited back to Titmouse and are at Lila Games. I knew about that one. I didn't know what Titmouse. Um, so at Lolly's at Legends Animated. And then Sherry, Sherry's a CG journalist. So she was at DreamWorks for a year. Um, and so sometimes when you're a modeler, sometimes the really well-paying gigs are in adjacent fields, right? So I think it's just, uh, we obviously will still help her come back into industry, but at the end of the day, sometimes you just want to make rent with your skills, right? So that's a huge success. We're very proud of Sherry. Um, so I think that if you want to have a career doing your craft, um, seeing value in those moments when you need to step out of pure entertainment um, is, is, I think, a really important because you're you're assembling a life and assembling a career. And Miranda, she's had so many, like that's just her current one. But I think she's ended up having several different trainee positions as well over the past year. Um, and yeah, that's that's all I had to add. Anything to add, Danny, to that? Or uh, no, yeah, it's been a pretty good success rate. Most of our apprentices have they've had a lot of luck getting placed into jobs. We've had a few apprentices that actually got jobs even before they finished the program. So what? Um, so it's been very, very successful. Um, we've had a lot of good feedback from the program. This has helped a lot of people get experience that they needed and help them get their established connections is a big thing. Because um, even the folks that are still job hunting, the connections that they've gotten have helped them a lot and helped them grow and should make them a lot more competitive. Um, so, yeah. Awesome. Um. So I'd like to be able to include a mod for an existing game in my portfolio, like a Skyrim SE mod. Would the documentation be investigated to see about my file naming and structuring? No. Again, competencies refer to active apprentices. So obviously make sure you know how to adjust different naming conventions, but you're not going to know um, what every studio is using. That's not your job. It's just the ability to not be rigid in the way that you do asset management and be more flexible to adjust the needs of an employer. Also with mods, you should probably also be applying under tech art because um, tech art is something that is very broad and the ability to mod is definitely something that would be a competency under that as well. Um, is there any common thread that you would say runs through accepted portfolios and applications? What do successful brick apprentices have in common? Oh, interesting. I would love for everyone to have their take on that. Um, I just realized that all of their vibes are very similar. I will say for the ones that have been most successful, um, a lot of it is their professionalism, right? Because that, that's the biggest thing that I think once you, because once you get your foot in the door at a company, you get to work there first. I think establishing that like, hey, you're reliable, you're dependable, that it's not just that like, yeah, I'm a great artist or I can have great ideas, but that like, I, I know how to do work in a professional environment. I respond to emails. I I show up on time. I meet deadlines because I know like Ant initially, that was a big note we got training wise was that like, oh, Ant had trouble getting the emails. It was their first job as it will be for many of you that join. And getting them in that habit of how to regularly like respond, be more responsive to emails, simple thing like making sure they're communicating when 
things they need help or when things are going well, when they have questions, and then that set them up for success online. So I think that's a big thing. All these apprentices are very good about that. Everyone's a very good listener. Everyone is very kind. Everyone's generally way calmer than I am. Um, I, I think uh, they all interviewed really well too. Um, and by really well, I just mean like they were able to listen to what people were saying and then ask really good questions. So I do think that that is probably the biggest pattern is um, they were all very good listeners and, and yeah. Um, so anything to add? I mean, back off of that, I think it's this willingness to learn and being open to embracing all the new things that are coming at them and wanting to learn these new skill sets. Um, oh, there was one more thing I was going to say. We can come back to me. Thank you for that, though. I never realized that how similar their vibes were. That's great. That's something we should really talk about more, I guess. Um, oh, so I yeah. feedback. I feel like they're all really open to receiving feedback uh, and they're really good about it and then being able to implement some of those changes. Yeah. They're all just really kind. They're good hangs. Um, but sorry. Yeah. Um, cool. Al, anything else? Or I would just say on the portfolios, like they followed through on what the ask was and they had a specific style um, and a voice that help set them apart so I think um that was helpful to see so um if you know I think that's part of like the professionalism like are they able to put in the application as it's asked and is their work consistent so that we can put forward the production management people were all very active in clubs and with um, different indie student projects too. I think that that's something that really spoke on their resumes that they all had in common. Um, they were all very passionate about just being a part of creative projects. Great. Any other questions? Look at us being on time. Um, Sochi, anything you want to say to wrap up? No, just thank you everybody for joining. Um, and if you have any questions, please feel free to contact us at contact at uh, and then I just put the link in the chat again to either apply as a new applicant or to update your current profile if you've applied in the past. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye.